Welcome to this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration. Hi, welcome. This is the Bionicle Inspiration series. If you can't understand French, you clearly would not have understood what I just said. Welcome. So, in this episode of the Barnacle Inspiration series, we're going to be talking about Titan Mox, something that you guys very much wanted in an episode. We're going to explore it today. So pretty much what I want to talk about in this episode is there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do if you're playing around with a Titan-sized build. So Titans kind of allow you to play with space, which I think is really awesome and helpful because you can really pack in a lot more detail when you have a lot more space to play with. You know, often a lot of people give a lot of credit to those like huge, massive mocks because they're like, man, these, these, this is, this is super cool. Like this just has like a wow factor. This is amazing. But in my opinion, I actually think the smaller mocks are harder to build because you have to pack in more detail into a space where there's just less surface area that you have to work with. Whereas if you're building a Titan, you can pack in way more detail. And yeah, sometimes people build really large builds, but they're really lacking that kind of detail. Um, and, you know, that's up to you whether or not that's a good or bad thing. But in my opinion, Titan mocks can have their pros in the fact that they're actually a bit easier to make. But of course, you do run into the issue of because you have more surface area, you do need to use more parts. So if this is an issue for you, it can be an issue because it's a little taxing. But this is where we can use some of those larger pieces. You know, I, I've thought that before. I've gone, man, I can't really build a Titan mock right now. I don't have any pieces to, to, to do that. It, like, it's going to be a huge mock. I'll use half my collection in doing this. But something that I yeah, often can forget and not, uh, not necessarily think about is the fact that Titan mocks use a lot of those larger pieces. And that's where it's time to shine. You can use some of those bigger pieces that you simply couldn't before on your smaller stuff. I'm talking about those Onowa chest pieces, the big ones. The ones that you go, how am I supposed to use this? This is impossible. This is too large of a part. Now's the time. Now's the time to use them. Break those out and have a good time. And what I was getting at before is the fact that those larger pieces that you could never have used before on your smaller stuff, well, now you can use it on this big stuff. And ironically, even though you think you don't have enough pieces for it, you're actually just going to put all the pieces that you never really used before into this larger mock. So, obviously, depending on how the mock is built, that might vary, but you might already have the pieces you need just because you'd, you'd never use them otherwise. Something to think about. Anyway. Enough of the little introduction about the pros and cons of Titan building. Let's break it down a little bit more as we begin with the first mock by Monarth, which is called Sivon, the Asepian's Warden. So one thing that I think is cool about this mock, and I mean, you can actually do it with any mock, but this is a prime example of that, is accent points. I've, I feel like I've, not, I've touched upon this in the past, but not gone into a lot of detail about it, so I'll go into a bit more detail about it now. What I mean by an accent point is, I don't know, you take a look at, like, an echidna one of those Australian animals, and the accent point on that is the spikes. You take the spikes off, it's just a little big-nosed, like, creepy little, little, little guy. Still cute, but, you know, he's awesome because he has spikes all over his back. Or you take a look at Pokemon, Blastoids. His accent point, the giant frickin' cannons on his shell. Otherwise, he's just a turtle. Or a turtoise. Toit, toit, a tortoise. A tortoise? A toot toot? A toot toot. He's just a toot toot, man. Or, take a look at Hunchcrow. He's super cool because he's got a freaking hat, a badass hat. Otherwise, he's just some crow. So accent points. I think that's a way to really take a mock and make it even cooler. Because sure, Blastoids would still look cool if he didn't have the cannons, but the cannons is what really makes him and what makes him so much cooler and more interesting to look at and fancy and cool. So what, what kind of accent point can you put on your mock? Sure, you've built this awesome Toa, but what if you give him, you know, cannons on the back of his shell like a Blastoids, or you give him a sort of cool gun arm or like this mock here trans orange hands or something like that fire hands or something cool you know a, a specific accent point on the mock that really makes it stand out takes it from just being this regular old humanoid or regular old animal or whatever and making it even cooler it's like Ponita would just be a horse but it's got fire on it super cool so what sort of accent point could you put on your mock to really accent it and make it look cool and make it stand out a bit more? I think this mock is a really cool example of that because this pop of orange on this mock really, really improves this silver and gold color scheme and really makes this mock a lot more unique. It kind of says something about the sort of elemental powers that it might have, uh, and otherwise it just looks cool. It really grabs me because of that accented color here on the mock. Really, really cool. I also love the mouth design on this. You know, we've got the uh, Avoki Takanuva mask there and silver sort of is the sort of bottom bit of the lip. And then you've got those two Baraki claws. It's kind of like the, the mouth kind of has three sections to it, kind of like a Halo Elite or something. And then you've also got those two uh, sort of weapon claws there kind of going down on the top. So it almost looks like he's got this quite large imposing mouth. Uh, and that's just the way that he's managed to blend all those pieces together. And it's a really, really nice... Nicely shaped, nicely designed head design there to create a really interesting and unique kind of menacing look to that uh, to that face there. Very, very nice. 
And something else that's super cool too, when you're building a Titan, you get, like I said before, you get a lot more area to play around with. And one of the cool things about that is the fact that you can use much larger hand designs. You know, we take a look at the actual fingers here. They're connected through a bunch of ball joints and they're made out of a bunch of Hero Factory shells and some of these very, very tiny Hero Factory bones to kind of link it all together. It's a very simple uh, finger design, but a very effective finger design. But those fingers are a little bit too big to make on a mock that's a Toa size or definitely too big for a Matoran. So that's something that's super cool about building a Titan is there's so m the, the possibilities that you have for hands and fingers on your mocks are, are vastly opened up because you get a lot more area to play with and you can use those pieces that are just too big for a Toa and you can now put them on your, uh, your Titan here and get a lot of cool finger poses and things like that. Very, very nice. So yeah, a lot to love about this mock by Mr. Monarch. Nice work. Let's move on to the next mock, which is by... IGU and is called Lego Mock the Titan. That's its name. It's actually the Titan. I know this is an episode on Titans, but this is called the Titan. Nailed it. So one of the things I like about this is funky, cool pup usages. Now, of course, if you're building a Titan or if you're building any mock, really, you can make cool, funky, nice part usages on the mock. There's nothing stopping you doing that on any mock. But I think building a Titan mock makes it even more possible and more easy for you to create and make lots of funky, cool, unique, interesting part usages. Why? Because again, you get to play with all sorts of pieces. You know, let's take a look at the nice part usages on this mock here. He has got a bit of an animal theme going here. He's got a Rancor, one of the Lego Rancor pieces, one of my favorite Lego pieces here. And he's used the head of the Rancor there as the actual head of the mock. And he's flipped the Rancor's arms up to look like sort of larger kind of horns coming out of its head. Really, really cool way of kind of playing with that piece. Uh, and, you know, if you kind of take it out of the context of the actual Rancor and stuff like that, it makes for a really, really sick, awesome head. You know, these big old horns coming out of it, and this big, menacing Rancor-looking head. Awesome. And then he's got this dino tail coming out of the back here as well. Looks super cool. And then he's got these CCBS mammoth heads there as little knee pads. Looks super cool. Really, just the texture of that looks nice. I doubt those are, he's meant to actually have mammoth heads on his knees. But besides the point, the texture and the general shaping there for those knee pads is flawless, perfect, and looks very nice. So that's the thing. He's been able to play with these parts and use them in really, really creative and, and nice ways. But I think one of the issues with using those pieces on smaller scale mocks is the fact that they're just too big. But because you're building a Titan and scale isn't necessarily an issue per se, you're able to use those really, really obscure, super large pieces and go ham, create some really, really nice part usages as a result. I think that's awesome. And yeah, that's something that uh, I was going to touch on a bit later in the episode, but I'll touch upon it now, is the fact that if you have the parts to commit to it or you just want to commit to it, even if you don't necessarily have the parts, maybe you want to make an investment and kind of dedicate your time to building a really cool Titan mock, I think it's a really great way to kind of hone your craft. So if, if, if you're watching this and you're like, I want to... I want to really commit to, 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 to bettering myself in my Lego hobby. I want to do something to, to grow and become a better builder, be like some of those guys that I idolize. I recommend building a Titan mock because, you know, like we've already seen so far, there's a lot more possibilities that you can play with. And the things that you could have done on a traditional mock, you can do so to a, an even larger and better degree. And you might be like, well, you're kind of right. I, I can see how you would justify that with what you were just talking about, but I'm not quite sold yet. Well... Let's continue on with the mocks in this episode because then I'll get you. Then I'll. Then you'll be on my side. But before we do that, let's quickly talk a little bit about this mock because there's a lot of cool stuff on it. I love the windshield over the head of the Rancor here, kind of looking like some sort of uh, helmet or sort of data screen going over his eyes there. It gives this interesting sci fi look and just sort of further expands across the head there. I think, uh, I think it's cool. It kind of helps sort of blend the rest of the head into the body there, not make it look too much like he's just shoved a Rancor on top. It helps to kind of blend it a little bit more, looks really nice. I also like too how he's used some of these Django Fett printed uh, torso pieces that came on the CCBS Django Fett, uh, because obviously that's a little bit more of a pronounced printing on there that's a little bit more obviously uh, Django Fett. But the way that he's kind of managed to sort of implement it into the rest of the design here, it very much just kind of flows with the rest of the colors and textures and things. And you kind of just sort of lose the fact that it is an act, uh, actually that Django Fett torso print. It just kind of blends in with everything. So again, I think that's a really cool way of kind of playing with everything. And again, I don't necessarily think you could do that on a smaller scale mock. Because this mock is so much larger, those things kind of get diminished because it is just a smaller detail. Whereas if you have a smaller mock, it might be a bit more obvious, you know what I mean? So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And a great way to use some of those more obscure, annoying printed pieces that... Uh, 
maybe just don't quite work on the mock that you're building. Well, maybe something like this would uh, would help them sort of fit in a bit more. But yeah, really awesome, brilliant silhouette to this mock. Very nicely done, IGU. Love your stuff. Let's move on to the next mock, which is by a one. Oh, goodness, what did I just do? I just refer. No, I just closed the... I just closed the window. How am I supposed to talk about the mock when I just closed the window? Okay, I got it back. I got it back. We're good. No one died. All right. This is a mock by Half Nix. Half, half. Half half one here. There's a mock by him, and this is called The Wire. So you might be like, hey, hey baby, I understand, Ben. I understand. I don't really want to make a Titan. I don't like humanoids. I like building interesting stuff. Or I don't really have the pieces to commit to a Titan, but I want to build something big and large. I feel you. I feel you. So, look at what this guy's done. I'm going to call him Harry, because that, that was the name of his email, because his other name is very hard to pronounce. So Harry here has done a fantastic job, because he's taken the Titan concept and... Change it up a bit. Still a large mock, but you don't need to build the whole rest of the body for it and stuff. He's built the cool skull, and then got all these tentacles coming out of the skull. Looks like some sort of crazy boss from some sort of cool video game. So you're still building a larger scale mock, but you don't have to actually build a larger scale mock. He's not the bad guy. He's... What? No. What has the quote go? Uh... Just because you are a bad guy does not mean you are a bad guy. Just because you're a titan build doesn't mean you're a titan build, you know? So yeah, think about it like that. Maybe look at some boss video games. Maybe like, uh, you know, uh, something, something like the big old hand from uh, Super Smash Brothers. Stuff like that, where it isn't the whole massive body and this huge obelisk of death or whatever like that. It's just a head and some tentacles or some interesting stuff like that. Uh, take a look at some different approaches to actually building this larger scale mock. Because this is still a large scale mock, but it's not a large scale mock. It's cool, isn't it? There's multiple different ways you could approach a Titan build, as we're seeing here. But, let's talk about the mock a little bit. One of the things I love are all these different arms that are coming out of the head. Really, really cool aesthetic in general, but I love how it's built using these repeated CCBS pieces and then interlacing the tires in between it. Really, really nice design and it all being repeated like that looks really cool. Like, you know, these are tentacles. They don't have to be super complex and intricate, amazing designs. No, they can just be tires and CCBS bones and it looks great. And... That wouldn't be that difficult to go on BrickLink and order a bunch of those. It would be relatively cheap because you're ordering them in bulk, and as long as the store has them in bulk, you should be set. Also love the glowing eyes here. The big old glowing red there would easily be achievable with your, you know, light-up power function stuff or just some general LEGO light bricks. So you could do that and stay totally purist. You don't have to necessarily go out and buy, you know, some LEDs from some hobby shop or something like that. You could use official LEGO pieces and still have it light up. And let's be honest. If you build a mock and it lights up, oh, isn't that going to look great on your shelf? Personally, I would rather have my mocks light up if I can. So, uh, yeah, definitely something to, to do because it looks great. And something else I think looks great is the eyebrows here. It's probably my favorite part on the mock, just using those tentacle pieces there to kind of form the eyebrows or, uh, just above the eyes there. Just sort of helps create this sort of menacing kind of look uh, uh, to his eyes. Kind of, kind of uh, I don't know, there's just something really nice about it. I just think that's my favorite detail. Especially really nice part use there, using those tail pieces there for eyebrows. Looks great. Love it. And also, that's another thing, too. You take a look at the teeth and, of course, the arms, as we were talking about before. Repeated parts. Nothing wrong with repeating a whole bunch of parts throughout your Titan build. And why, you might ask? Because, well, it creates kind of general unity throughout the mark. And, you know, I was building a Titan the other day, and I was getting some feedback from my mates, and they were saying that, you know, I was using too many random different pieces that the textures were kind of getting muddled up and it kind of just looked like a kind of clump of random pieces and uh, I was given the recommendation of just you know buy a bunch of one part or get a bunch of one part if you've already got it kind of thing and just kind of part spam just get a whole bunch of it and you know it kind of creates very similar textures everything flows together a lot more nicely uh, and if you're building a titan mock it's a lot more kind of easier to do that uh, for sure well if you're doing it on a larger scale I guess you could do that on a smaller mock and it would still be pretty easy Besides the point, though, part spamming is a great idea for Titan mocks specifically, but any kind of build, really, uh, because, yeah, everything flows together very nicely and just sort of is uh, unified, very nice. So, yeah, super cool. Anyway, nice work on this awesome skull villain guy here. Let's move on to the next mock, which is by my man Clever Crow, and it's called M-A-K-O Brimstone Prototype Mark One. So Clever Crow, of course, goes ham with his edits, I'll probably throw a few of those edited pictures in there because they are super, super rad. But in the meantime, let's talk about this Titan Mox. So, in the last Titan Mox episode, I actually had a clever Chrome Mock in there, and I think I touched upon these same concepts. It's been a while since I watched that episode, so I 
if I'm repeating myself, that was like episode eight, so I'm hardly repeating myself when it was like a hundred episodes ago. But one of the things I love that Cre- Clever Crow does is he builds a lot of Titan mocks, but specifically what he does is he paints a lot of his pieces. And that's awesome, because like we see here, taking a look at kind of the head and chest of uh, this mock here, it really, really pops having this beautiful, I guess this is kind of an accent point like we were talking about before, where these really beautifully painted pieces just become the sort of centerpiece of this mock, and really something that you focus on, because it's, it's a beautiful paint job, this sort of oozing of kind of almost lava and sort of light shining through his mask there just looks magnificent, and really conveys a lot of character kind of thing. So I love that. And then another thing that he hasn't done too much on this mock, but he's done it a lot more on other mocks, is the idea of making Titan mocks and not even caring about the color scheme, just using heaps of pieces, playing around with this larger space, so really experimenting with the ways that you can use parts and the shaping that you can create out of it, and not caring about the color scheme. Just throw that out the window, make a rainbow warrior, make a make a multicolored mess, and then coming back later and painting it. Because, you know, I mean, you don't have to paint it. You know, if you don't want to paint your pieces, I'm not going to force you to. But if that's something that you, you know, you want to consider doing, you could. So that way you can have a rainbow mock, spray paint it black, and then everything flows and looks nice together. And of course, that would have been the case here with the Toxic Reaper mask that he's used here. Obviously, that is in lime. Would have been very much a a sort of standout on this mock, having a big old lime mask like that. So uh, kind of painting it in and having it fit with the rest of the color scheme really brings the mock together and allows him to use a mask that wouldn't have worked on this mock, but now he's made it work on this mock. So super, super cool. Speaking of super cool things on this mock, one of the things I really like are the weapons. He's got two shoulder cannons here, which look magnificent. And then he's got this huge, big old gun as well, like a massive, massive, brilliant looking gun, uh, which yeah, is just super cool. That's certainly another thing too, when you're building your uh, your Titan mocks there, you can go pretty ham on weapons, you could have those things be massive, huge, and it wouldn't be a problem, it wouldn't look out of proportion at all, because well, it's a large mock, it needs a large weapon, so if you love your weapons, definitely build a Titan mock, because you can go ham on those for sure. So yeah, lot to love about this Titan mock from Mr. Clever Crow. Let's move on to the final mock in this episode, which is by Dave Foreman and is called Voltius the Blizzard Tyrant. So I was talking before about how, like, surface area on the mock, because it's naturally much larger, you get to put more detail in, you get to kind of play around a bit more, use some of those larger pieces that you couldn't have used before. Well, definitely you can pack in more details, and I think this is a prime, beautiful example of that, because, yeah, you can pack in heaps of details and really kind of convey uh, an aesthetic or a specific type of character as a result of that. So obviously this guy's title is the Blizzard Tyrant. And so Dave has packed in all the different kind of ice pieces that he can. Got some snowflake kind of pieces on his shoulders. Got these Strack ice kind of pieces going across his chest. These Gelu blades, which look very ice-like and things like that. And then other kind of general pieces, which look very sort of ice-themed and ice-like. Overall, creates a beautiful looking aesthetic and just looks really nice as a result. And so that's kind of the thing you can do, is because you have a larger surface area to play with, you can pack in heaps more details. So if you're someone who likes to go very detail-heavy on a mock, build a Titan! Because, uh, by all means, you can pack in as much detail as you can, because you've got more room to play with to pack in said detail. So that's pretty cool. Something else, too, that's important, I think, to bring up is we take a look at the lower legs here. He's used some pistons. You know, some people might be commenting in the comments and be like, I've built my Titan, but he can't stand up. Fair enough. Because you are building a much larger mock, you will have to pay attention to structural integrity. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to just make sure everything's supported with pistons, whether that's on the torso, on the arms, on the legs, anywhere. Add some pistons in just so it has a little bit more sort of extra oomph to kind of hold it up a bit. Pay attention to some of the old uh, Titans that came in actual LEGO sets, because a lot of them used Titans and torsos and arms and legs and things like that, and it was able to sort of hold itself up and pose uh, a fair bit as well, still. So, uh, by all means, download some LEGO instructions for some old Titans, like Hydraxon or Maxilus or something, and pay attention to how they've used those pistons and do the similar kind of thing in one of your own mocks. Because that way, that guy's definitely going to be able to hold himself up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then another thing, probably my favourite thing on this mock, is the ribcage design here using some of those white kind of tail pieces there to kind of form this nice rib cage. Looks really nice. A lot of stuff to love on this mock, but a lot of stuff to love on all of the mocks that we featured in today's episode on Titans. So hopefully, my points that I said before about how Titans can be a really interesting way of kind of playing with your craft, kind of really refining the way that you build and exploring different kind of part usages and playing with detail and stuff like that because you get a larger surface area to play with. It's like going to the art store and buying the biggest canvas you can, getting a whole bunch of paints, coming home and going to town, making the coolest thing you can, making a hot mess and having fun. 
that's kind of what building a titan is, you know? You get to you get to do what you love and to the extreme scale. Make it super cool, make it big, make it awesome. So do it. If you've got the time and you've got the crime, see if you want to make a titan mod, because I think it'll be worth your while. Man, I feel like I'm, like, selling titans. Have I been, like, commissioned by LEGO to sell titans? I wish I was. I wish LEGO was paying me. But, uh, <laughs> I love it. For, for four easy payments of nine ninety nine, you could build yourself a Titan, Mark. Just call the number on the screen below, and you could build yourself a Titan. Anyway, anyway, anyway. This has been an episode on Titans. I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully you'll build some Titans. If you do, let me know. I'm keen to see them. And if you want to submit some of your own mocks for future episodes of the Barnacle Inspiration series, you can. Here's the way to do it. Check out the email that you're currently seeing on your screen. Send me some pictures, send me a link, send me some info to the mock that you want on the show, and then I will add it to the list, and then one day it'll appear on the show. And then I think every, like, fifth episode, every tenth episode, uh, I do a fan-submitted episode, and I don't know when if that's the fifth or the tenth yet. The next time I post one, I'll let you know. <laughs> but sort of every so often there'll be fan-submitted episodes. Uh, and there'll be a whole bunch posted in there, but by all means, like, if you submit something, I'll put it in any episode if it fits. But the Fan Submitted Mocks episode is just a way for you to, uh, not have to wait years for it to come out, so it perfectly fits into the right episode. It's just like, here, here, <laughs> here's your mock, it's in an episode. Enjoy! Uh, and maybe soon I might do another, uh, BIS live stream. uh, or in the past I did one, I was able to cover, like, 12 or something, uh, submissions in a... in a, in, in, in a live, in front of a, a live studio audience. It was not in front of a live studio audience, it was in my house, <laughs> but <laughs> it was in front of a live audience on the internet, um, so, 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 you know, eventually I might do another live stream, that could be another place to do it, I'm keen to do more, so if I do one, stay tuned, I'll definitely post updates about that if that's happening, I'm talking so much, it's a long episode, hope you enjoyed, check out the links in the description for this, uh, for these guys, because they're super rad, and I'll see you in the next one, hope you had a great day, get building, mmm!